How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today is going to be a really interesting video because we're going to be having a look at one of the most underused JavaScript loops which is called for await of. Now if you've never used the for await of loop before don't worry I pretty much haven't used it either uh, of course prior to learning it but it is definitely something that I don't think about on a daily basis but it's still worth learning how it works. So basically the for await of uh, loop expects an iterable of async objects. So if you've got a list of async tasks that must be done sequentially, then this may come in handy. Now, if you have a look at the documentation for the 408 of loop on MDN, you can see that the majority, if not all of the examples use the yield keyword within the async functions. Okay. Now, I'm actually going to be showing you how this loop works using something that we all are familiar with and that's going to be the fetch API. So let me jump right into the code example right now going inside VS Code and I'm going to take you through how it's going to work. So right here I have inside a directory called API and then users. I've got three JSON files representing three separate users and you can think of this as a fake API, okay? Each of these have the same schema, they all return the same data. Now, going inside the index HTML, we can see here, I've got a function called fetch user. It takes an ID in, then it simply gets the JSON file with that ID being passed in right there and interprets it as JSON and returns that user. So real quick, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna say uh, console.log, then pass in here, fetch user, then pass through 20182 just like this, then I'm going to say, oh, sorry, my mistake, guys, it's going to be a dot then, so we need to say dot then, once we've got the user, we are then going to console.log, that's going to be a lot better, I'll save this, go back in the browser here, and we get the object right there, so we can see here, this method works, and we get the data back, now, how are we going to demonstrate for await of using this function, well, we need to create an iterable that has these promises within it. So to do that, we can make a new constant called uh, users to fetch, okay, equal to a new array. Now we're going to pass in here fetch user and then pass through here 20182 and do the exact same thing for, of course, six two nine eight three and then seven seven two one one now of course in your real world application you wouldn't be hard coding these numbers you would find a way to programmatically uh, call this function x amount of times for uh, a specific set of users but in this case here yeah, i'm just hard coding it to keep it simple of course so now if I was to save this and go back in the browser here, if I inspect the network tab, because it's an async operation, it actually goes and fetches those users. Um, if I just can make it a bit smaller here, it goes and fetches those users immediately because of course we call the function and it's gonna fetch them. However, because it's an async function, this operation might take, let's say three seconds and it's still happening asynchronously. This line of code is still going to run. It's no different to, of course, calling it normally just because it's inside an array. So the point is here, the main point is these functions are async and they may not yet be completed once you reach this line of your code. So in that case, you would typically use the await keyword um, to, of course, wait for uh, the user to be fetched um, or even the dot then and so on. But now we're gonna be using for await of. Let's actually loop over this array of async objects and then log out the answer. So we're gonna say here for await const user of users to fetch, okay? It looks a little bit strange, but essentially right here, this block is going to firstly wait for this operation to complete. Then it is going to perform whatever code you put inside the block. The next iteration is gonna come around. It's gonna wait for this operation to complete. In other words, this promise to be fulfilled. Once the promise is fulfilled, it's gonna execute this code and then so on. So it's like a loop that pauses and waits for the next thing to finish each time. 
So let's place this within an, uh, within an async function to allow the awaits keyword to be used, right? So let's say async function here. Uh, let's call this function main as an example, right? Then within here, place the for loop just like this, okay? And now we are going to say console.log the user, okay? Let's now call main and see how we go. I'll save this go back in the browser and in the console, we get those three users there. Now, there are two important things to mention. Firstly, if this was a real application, you would probably not care about which user gets rendered first. If you were to example, render this data to the screen, you don't really care if Johnny finishes um, the request or Johnny's request finishes before Dom's request, right? You don't care about the order, but it's just an example, okay? Or maybe you do, who knows? But the point is the for await of keyword, sorry, uh, loop is going to maintain the order of the iterable. That's the whole point. Because if you don't care about the order, you might use something like promise.all. Right? So first thing is you probably don't care about the order. Second thing is the order is the main thing that this is going to be used for. You have that control. All right. So let's just go back inside the browser here. So we can see that upon refreshing, we immediately get the data back. Okay. Now I want to quickly demonstrate what I mean by it's going to wait for the request to complete. Also keep in mind and observe here that I can refresh it forever and it's always gonna be Dom, Johnny and Bobby. That order is being retained. So going back inside here now, let's put a fake delay and try to mimic uh, one of these requests taking longer than the other one. So we're gonna do this by returning a promise object itself, okay? I'm gonna say return new promise here, then within here, pass in a resolve and reject. And then within this function, we are going to run the fetch call I'll copy and paste it within here. Also, I've got a video dedicated to uh, creating your own promises and using the syntax right here if you're interested in doing that. But if not, that's okay. So we're gonna say dot then and then we've got the user. We are then going to resolve and pass the user in. So basically what we're saying here is, look, fetch the user, then once it comes back, resolve and go back to the promise and essentially pass the user data back in. So it's gonna do the exact same thing as it's currently doing. If I refresh the page, we can see how that works and it's the exact same thing, right? But within this result, we are going to use set timeout. Let's say set timeout and create a fake delay, okay? Within here, we're gonna say after one second, then you get the user, okay? Or resolve the user. So this is kind of like mimicking a server. Um, when the server might take a little bit longer to return data for whatever reason, right? So after one second, then you communicate back and say the user is now ready. Now if I refresh, we wait and then bang, okay? The reason why there was a one second delay, of course, because of our code, but they all came at the same time because they all start at the same time. So at the one second mark, they're all ready. But we're actually gonna say here, if the ID is equal to 62983, so the middle one, then make it a five second delay. Otherwise, make it a five millisecond delay, okay? Let's save this now, go back in the browser, refresh. We get Dom shut away, then five seconds later, it's waiting right here, yeah? It's waiting for Johnny to be, you know, returned. Then it goes to Bobby. Try again, refresh, it does Dom, it waits, okay? Maintains the order. Johnny and then Bobby. So the point is it always retains the order, okay? And that's basically it for the video. Now, I do recommend that you, of course, check out the documentation for yourself. Like I said, a lot of this here is gonna use the yield keyword, um, but, and you know, of course, generator functions, but this is just an example that we all understand because of course, we're all quite familiar with the Fetch API. So that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.